good afternoon can you hear can you hear me so i don't have the <coughs> the clicker will take a little light into install so i would rather save that and click it myself good afternoon everyone my name is sudindra i work with ibm i'm a, a chief design officer for ibm and i'm very happy uh, to be here today uh, that was a very fitting end right after lunch you know what we saw the last interface was pretty much uh, very uh, interesting that way uh, what I'm talking about today um, is uh, we, we heard a lot. We heard from Satish really, really interesting uses of uh, digital interfaces and how that is uh, changing the world today. And my talk is a call to action on how can we make it effectively uh, work for people. So it's a call to action. It's uh, something that I'm very passionate about because I'm passionate about design, and that's the reason I'm here. All of us are here, but I'm passionate about designing for good. And uh, that's uh, my talk uh, all about because I believe that we have a choice to make. And that choice needs to be made today as we sit here because we have, a, we have an opportunity to make or break a few things as we go along. We are in, a, in an exalted status at this point in time in the industry, and we have uh, the power to make that particular choice. With great power comes great money as well, but yeah, <laughs> sometimes. But yeah, so uh, that's, that's what we are. We can completely disrupt the marketing that, uh, as it happens, or we can play into the hands of some Clever people, but they may not be very, you know, people friendly. So it's it's a choice that we need to make, and I'm, uh, my talk is about that. So first and foremost, uh, this talk is about marketing and business side of design. As as um, <clears throat> we know, in the business side of design, the first thing when you pick up the first pamphlet, you pick up the first article that you read, the first uh, book that you read talks about this particular thing. Experience is the brand today. Uh, <clears throat> brand has uh, been manifested in various different ways and today they've realized that what people experience as, as, as the brand itself is the real brand. And we have, we have enough and more data, there have been um, studies that show if people feel good about a brand, they um, definitely feel that uh, they are more loyal to that particular brand and so on and so forth, you know, en enough and more number of studies that's out there. Uh, that's one premise, but let's uh, look at what is brand, you know, itself. What, what exactly does it mean when we say brand? Uh, we understand experiences because we are in the field of creating experiences. Uh, brand itself is not something we can uh, probably naturally align to, though we have been using brands, and we are all exposed to about 2,000 brands every day. Every single day from the time we've been born, you know, you, you don't know which water you drank, but I can tell you that you remember Woodward's gripe water. Right? So from the day you're born, you're exposed to different kinds of brands that are there. Uh, but where is this brand actually? Where do you think that it exists? It exists nowhere. There is no brand. There is no entity called brand. It is actually in our minds. Right? So uh, this entity called the brand, it's an intangible one for people. And why is it important for us now? Right? That's the question that I've been asking uh, for a few years uh, now. And um, uh, when, when you uh, realize where I'm going with it, you'll see how important it is for us. So uh, brand is, the owner of a brand in a company is a chief marketing officer, and he works with his agencies and so on and so forth to manifest it in the right way. But there are few things that, you know, uh, he's up at night because of this particular thing. And, and the reason is because of this, the brand value. The brand value is up to about 30% of market capitalization. That's what Forrester uh, Millward Brown, which is a brand analyst company, uh, has quoted this number. It's up to 30% of the market value of any company, up to 30%. So that's a great, very, very big number for somebody to deal with. And, and a CMO is definitely, as you can understand, he is under a severe pressure to ensure that the brand um, is uh, rightly understood, rightly experienced, and so on and so forth. So that's the uh, value of a brand, and he, and he keeps uh, that up at, that's what keeps him up at night. So uh, he's constantly thinking one thing, how do I make this relevant for my people? How do I make this engaging for my people, and so on and so forth? How do I uh, increase the mind share in the people of what I'm uh, 
sharing. So he's uh, thinking about customer engagement all the time. So we've been uh, talking about customer engagement for ages, you know. So uh, since uh, you know, time immemorial, uh, we've been having customer engagement. The first time you had a product, you had a customer engagement. You had TV ads that made you cry. You had print media ads and so on and so forth. Lots of things happening in terms of creating customer engagement. Today, we have moved on from a lot of different, these are all different channels that have been uh, used, a lot of interactions, one-way interactions uh, in a way, uh, but they've, they've all been used for uh, people to uh, understand the brand better and tell the brand story. Today, there is a lot more uh, in, in that space, right? There is one more tool in his uh, toolbox, in, in the marketing officer's toolbox, and that is uh, the tool of technology, right? So he's using technology as well as uh, another channel uh, to, uh, towards this. And he's partnering with his, probably a guy who he and him and him, uh, CMO and a CIO are generally diametrically opposite in the way they think in a company, but they're coming together to unleash this potential of customer engagement. They're getting together. Uh, and another interesting fact is that we have the um, CMO probably, not probably, it's, it's a, it's a a surety as per some of the research. Gartner research, especially by 2017, the CMOs will be spending significantly higher amount on technologies than CIOs. Because of two reasons. Uh, one is their consumers are a lot more, uh, you know, the one who's connected with the customer more is the CMO, and they're, the customers are a lot more connected onto the technologies and the digital world and so on and so forth. And the marketing budgets are increasing. They're as much as three times higher than the uh, CIO budgets at this point in time. So uh, that's the change that's happening and therefore uh, there is a lot more spend on technologies and that is the opportunity that a lot of technology uh, firms have seen and that's the, that's the reason you see a lot of digital marketing and so on and so forth happening across the world. So um, this is interesting also because uh, one is that there are two uh, people or probably different uh, sets, different orientation coming together. The other thing is that uh, <clears throat> A CIO does not understand brand or he doesn't understand customers naturally. A CMO doesn't understand technology. So they are kind of in a, in a place where there are a lot of unknowns. Right? And they're dealing with this particular beast called the digital. So we are all in the world of the digital, right? The digital ecosystem, the digital marketing, you know, so on and so forth. You talk about social, you talk about like, you know, at least 360 words about digital. Right? So that's what is happening. That's the new thing that's, that's the, the most shiniest thing that's out there for people to play with. But are they, are, are they doing justice? See, my call here is to, uh, is to understand if, first of all, uh, are people doing justice to this word uh, or not? Or how, do, how can we help? Now, uh, very interestingly, uh, digital, uh, what, what it has done is that it has brought CMO closer to the CIO and CIO closer to the CMO but both of them are kind of in this unknown space and the guys they're more relying on these days are the designers because we understand this naturally. For uh, many years now, we have been in this space. Knowingly or unknowingly, we've been in this space and today we are, uh, we, uh, they lean on us because the marketing organizations are comfortable talking to a designer because there is a element of creativity that is involved, there is an element of customer uh, understanding that is involved and so on and so forth. They're much comfortable talking to us and so on and so forth. The CIO organization is comfortable dealing with the designer as well because we understand technology. We have been using, uh, we've been creating interfaces and interactions for technology, using technology and so on and so forth. So there is a, a natural, because of natural planetary arrangements or whatever, we are right in the center of this particular sweet spot where uh, we are, uh, where the people, brand and technology, all of them intersect and we are right in the middle of it. And that's what I said, we, we, have, we have an amazing uh, opportunity, we have an amazing power right now to actually change things. So that's uh, what has happened for us. And the reason we are, we are uh, here is because uh, of this. So when we started out, we all, we all uh, you know, spoke about usability and, and uh, you know, creating great interfaces, making things easy, and so on and so forth. Then we moved on to user experience, where we uh, added desirability and uh, you know, uh, rational understanding of people. And we added that. We, we created amazing user experiences, and so on and so forth. 
finally now we are in uh, the area of brand experiences. Brand experiences uh, take this user experience to a whole new level. It's it's a uh, entire you know you could call it service design or you can call it whatever, but it's actually at the heart of it. It's highly emotional because when people connect with brands emotionally, that's when the tr true uh, revenues and dollars are unlocked. That's what you know uh, the marketing team is is uh, pretty excited about. So brand experience is where the products that a company creates, the messages that they share and the actions that the company does, or the brand does, are all in sync. And that's the brand experience. All Across all of these things, when things come together, that's when we are talking about actually something called as a brand experience. So this is the next step for all of us uh, in an influence brand experience in the right way. But there is, um, as with everything else, there is good and bad. So what is happening is that uh, digital, as I said, has, has been seen as a channel. It's, it's seen as a, another thing that where I can bombard people with messages. That's the way a lot of lot of companies approach digital as. Now that's not uh, uh, you know the most optimal use of digital. Digital can actually unlock true value of products, true value of brands, and that's my uh, case here. What um, what we have seen is uh, people using it and not leading the way through digital. So uh, therefore. Uh, <clears throat> and as I said, we are advocates of people, and that's the reason we are in this uh, place where uh, we can uh, talk about um, digital in a in a far more meaningful way, in a far more authoritarian way than anybody else. So, uh, for us, it's very important to understand that digital is much more than one channel where you bombard people with more messages. One of the things that uh, there is this concept called decision simplicity. So in, in brand, people prefer products which can help them simplify their decision in buying that particular product. Uh, they trust the particular information that they gathered. They can navigate to that particular information and then actually weigh options on how to uh, you know, uh, buy that particular product or not. So that's, uh, that's decision simplicity is what people crave for when they buy something. That's, that, that means you eliminate the um, amount of marketing messages that people people want. All of us are bombarded with a lot of these messages, and especially today. So digital, it's very important for us to understand that it is not something that you should unleash on people, like the way uh, you know Satish Patel also spoke about. It's not about unleashing on whatever you know that's there at your disposal, but actually having something meaningful. And that's that's the reason I said we have a choice to make, and we have a very powerful choice uh, here. We. Uh, have a choice to make whether we want to create meaningful experiences or we want to create clever brand communication. Is clever brand communication important? Absolutely, yes. But is meaningful experience uh, important? Probably a lot more than that. So let's, let's uh, spend a minute and understand what is a clever brand communication in the first place. The clever brand communication is uh, is where you have, uh, this is a billboard, uh, British Airways billboard, you, how many of you have seen, have seen this uh, particular billboard? A be very beautiful one. It, it, it unlocks or brings the child out in you. You know, you, you, you're seeing this. There's a British Airways uh, flight that's pa you know, passing on top. You should see this video. And um, this child gets up the moment there is a British Airways flight, and he points at it and says, this is, from, this is flight BA-475 from Barcelona, and, and the pilot is a jackass or whatever that is. But the fact is, this billboard actually connects with the Heathrow Airport, and there's a whole bunch of technologies that is at play here. Very clever brand communication, beautifully done. But what is better in my mind is this. This is also a billboard, probably by the same agency. But this billboard is installed in, in, a, in, a, in a desert in uh, Peru. And this was about um, you know, uh, aqua and water related campaign, etc. So what the agency did, maybe the same agency, they thought, why should I talk about water? Can I create and generate water to this land which is desert right now, which is an arid land? So they, they put up a billboard which actually generates water. And it changed the life of the village forever. It's far more meaningful in my mind. It's not only clever, but it's also meaningful. It's changed the village. The previous billboard made a lot of people happy. But this one changed the life. So the, for me, this, uh, this is the call that I'm asking for us to take. So there are three ways in which you can uh, design for meaningful brand experiences. And I'm seeing the time uh, card, so I want to keep it really quick. Uh, one, th these are three things, in three ways in which you can actually uh, 
design meaningful brand experiences, extend the product into the digital world, extend the brand into the digital world, and thirdly, make everyday life a little bit better. So uh, these are the three um, ways in which uh, some of the companies that have done, Sokoni is a running uh, apparel company. They have created uh, an, uh, an enormous engagement in the digital uh, world where they can connect with their friends and so on and uh, you know, uh, track their uh, running, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, online, Sneakerpedia is a community of people who love sneakers. So the way they have extended the product has been uh, pretty interesting. Extending the brand, uh, Disney World uh, is, is a beautiful example of where they've extended the brand. The World Moms panel, so when you go to a Disneyland, that, self, that itself is a great experience. But the World Moms panel of a Disneyland actually is a, is a, is a collection of people who've experienced Disneyland, very veteran moms, and they advise other moms on how best to experience Disneyland itself. And they're not part of Disney, so they're extending the brand in a wonderful way. Progressive Casualty Insurance has a, has a device called Snapshot. So it's an insurance company. They make money if you drive badly. But the Snapshot device helps you drive safer when you put it in your car. And again, extending the brand into far more meaningful ways. Uh, uh, the finally, uh, Patagonia, Dell, and Ford are three uh, examples I want to give. Patagonia, again, is a, is a hiking uh, accessories company, uh, but what they uh, making an ability, uh, and they don't see themselves as a computer company. They see themselves as a company that is helping people reach their full potential by making you know the right decisions. That, that's the way they have seen their own company. And finally, Ford, Ford's is not a car company, and I'm not saying that. I'm uh, Bill Ford, who is the chairman of Ford, he's saying that we are not a car company, we are a mobility company. We are in the business of getting people from one place to another, and that's what we are doing, right? Incidentally, they, they make cars to get that done, right? In the future, they may not be making cars. So it's, it's about making the everyday a bit better, and these companies are thinking that way, right? So uh, that's... Uh, <clears throat> The, for me, that's what is meaningful experience. It, it's where products become incidental in everybody's life. So that, therefore, we have a choice to make, and that choice needs to be made, made today, because if you don't think about meaningful experiences, you will be in the trap of creating something which is probably very clever, but may not be something that is adding meaning to people's life. So we want to think about whether we want to create meaningful brand experiences, or we want to create clever brand communication, or even more importantly, this is a choice we need to make. We, do we want to influence users to buy more, which we have been probably doing, or do we want to influence our own employers, stakeholders, brands, our own people who pay us money? We want to influence them to be more meaningful in actually everyday life. That's a call that we need to take, I think, at this point in time. Thank you, that's uh, the end of my presentation.